Hello, family. Welcome back to TWC. Another amazing episode. Please, please, eh? before we continue with this video, just like I tell you, you will not regret it. What you hear is nice. Like it first. Eh? Then you leave a comment. <laughs> I promise you that you're going to enjoy the episode. All right, so I'm going to be talking about overcoming timidity. Timidity, you know what it means to be timid? is to feel like you don't deserve what you get. You feel like um, every other person is better than you, so you, you hide behind. And of course, timidity is not shyness. So some people are shy, but they're not timid. But sometimes timidity can express itself in shyness. And I want to talk about how it happens. I'm going to read the scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You can type this in the comment section. Power, love, sound mind. These three things are the things that God has given to you. Power, love, sound mind. And if God did not give you something, then you have no business owning it. That means God did not give us fear. If we find out that we have fear or timidity, we know that it's not coming from God. An enemy has done this. The devil has planted it inside of us. And I want to say that timidity is a form of fear. Just like we have different types of fever. There's Lassa fever, there's malaria fever, typhoid fever, um, dengue post fever, breakup fever. <laughs> you know sometimes when they break up with you, there's a fever that comes with that. There's all that kind of fever, types of fever. But there's also fear, different types of fear. Some people have phobias, some people have the fear of death, the fear of losing someone close to them, the fear of failure and all of that. Timidity is a type of fear that whenever it is time to own up, whenever it's time to be something or do something or show up, you are afraid that maybe they won't like me, maybe they won't receive me, maybe they won't accept me. You're just timid and when it's time to do something, you just bow your head. And because of where I'm coming from, from, this, from, from how I, I'm a spiritual person, I like to pray and all of that. I like to see the spiritual angle of things and I see fear as a spirit because the Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear. That means fear is a spirit. That means if timidity is a type of fear, it means timidity is a spirit. And it enters into people. It doesn't mean you're possessed though. It just means that this thing tries to control different aspects of your life. And how you see characteristics of people who are timid is how they face life. They face life like second class citizens. They face life like, you guys are the ones that deserve it. You see a lady and a guy is trying to ask her out to marry her and she's feeling like this guy is too fine for me. Every time you feel like something is too for you, too fine for you, too good for you, too high for you, too much for you, too expensive for you, that's one who can be part of it. Every time you start feeling that way, it is possible. It is possible that the spirit of timidity is somewhere around dancing, trying to dial your number, but you're not going to pick that call in the name of Jesus Christ. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. You see, for example, you ask people, take this mic, talk to people, they want to die, they want the ground to open up. They want... That's not life. I'm not saying everybody should be a public speaker, but I'm saying that there is a spirit in you that has made you bold, that you can be able to look people in the face and say, hello, hi, good morning. There are people who would have had good networks, nice people in their networks, amazing people, but they can't approach people. They can't say hello to people. They're afraid. What if every time there is that fear of what if they reject me? What if they don't accept me? What if timidity is speaking? And why this topic is so important is that you truly, truly can't do big things if you're a timid person because your mind will draw you back. Scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are giving off that vibes. Have you met, have you met spoiled children before? Let me know the word spoiled children. Have you met rich kids? Yes, I know you are rich. I know you are blessed. Yes, some of us, we've made money from working. Have you met people who were born rich? There's an attitude with which they do life because everything they've ever needed has always been supplied to them. So when they come out here, they, they can't even come to your room and just come to your house and just enter your kitchen. They're always demanding for things. They just believe that this world is their own. You're like, ah, madam, this is my house. Come stop demanding for things. Why? There is no restriction in their mind. Poverty does not live around them. Then have you met the other ones that poverty lives around them? People who have grown in luck. There's always an apology in their voice when they speak like, ah, uh, sorry, do, do, you, do you mind? Uh, do you think you, your, their voices are shaken? It doesn't mean that these people are more respectful than the others. It's a life. It's, it's, a, it's a mindset that has been ingrained in the lives and the minds and the hearts of these people. And timidity will follow your growth process. It will follow your life experiences, how you were born. 
So we've mentioned what timidity is and how it manifests in people. It manifests in the life choices people make as well. People just say, you know what, let me settle. Let's manage, let's manage. They, they never stretch. That's one of the expressions of timidity is that people never stretch and demand. They're always afraid, like, let them not think I'm doing too much. Let them know. There's always an apology. There's no boldness with which you do life. And I tell you something, boldness is not bold face. Boldness will show in the life choices that you make and the demands that you make for life. You're demanding something from life. It's a sign of how bold that you are. So boldness is not even how bold face. Some people are arrogant, they're not bold. Bold people can be very quiet, very silent, but they won't take less than what they believe they deserve. And it is a mindset that must enter you. It, it takes years for that thing to enter you. So these are the expressions of timidity, inability to step up, inability to demand from life, inability to go for it, inability to, to demand from people what you think you deserve. I deserve better treatment than this. Some of these people with this spirit of timidity, you see them when they go for job interviews. They are always afraid. How much do you think we should pay you? Um, sir? Mm, mm, me? You know that thing, you're just not sure, it's you, you're just, you know, you're, why? Why is your life like this? So let's talk about how this thing happens. How does timidity happen? It's formed over time. Some people, it is formed from the family they were born into. There's something called nature and nurture. Nurture is basically the trainings you have received through life, the experiences that you have gone through life and how it has shaped your personality. And nurture is so important. If you were born in a poor environment and you live there for 18 or 20 years of your life poverty is around you the only way that thing will not be inside of you is if if you were there and you didn't let it enter inside and it takes a lot of deliberate action and the help of god so one of the ways timidity enters people's life it is the things the experiences they've gone through how they how their background how they grew up you're coming from a place where you know every time is gary gary we drink in the house that's all we drink in the house and no no disrespect because i basically came from such a place then you find out that as you are coming up, you want to make money, not because you want a better life. You're making money so you can prove to people that in this family too, we too, we can eat chicken. Then you find out that by the time you grow up and start eating like your chicken, people you're trying to prove something to, they've gone far, far, far. You buy a Corolla, you want the whole world to know you have a car. The people you're trying to impress, they've gotten G-Wagons, they've gotten Ferrari. Do you understand? Timidity is always trying to impress. Always trying to show, always trying to prove that me too I have. But when you receive the spirit of boldness, which is the spirit of adoption, you are settled. You are fine. You have nothing to prove to this world. You have nothing to prove to people. You already know who you are in Christ Jesus. So number one way it enters people is background. Number two way is life experiences. When people keep, people keep insulting you or you write the exam, you fail. You write the exam, you fail. Zero over 20. So over, just like that, you keep failing and then it forms, it forms a stronghold in your heart that makes you feel like, you know, I don't think I did that. For me, for example, <laughs> okay, let me not say it's timidity, but growing up, right, my siblings, my younger siblings, they can dance. My younger sister won a very, they won a group, they won a car from dancing. That is, my family members can dance, but me, you're dearly beloved. If you, if I move one leg like this, <laughs> it's like, oh dear Jesus. But I noticed something. The reason why it was so was because growing up, the moment I start dancing, everyone start laughing. He was a, I beg you not get rid of for but do you? What's it make your leg a, like that? So I had phobia for dance. That um, if will I dance, I just sit down and I had this fear of when I get married, who would dance for me? Because maybe this thing where I did do, I go use marry. You get until I grew up and I became an adult myself, and I found out that yes, I'm not a dancer, but I'm not of rhythm. I can't. I did try. If you put music, I will not dance off beat. I, 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 there are some dance I can dance. I'm not a dancer, dancer, but you can't force me. There are many people I can dance more than. But I had that phobia because of what, it, of course, it was, it was a harmless thing. But then it was just already inside of me that, oh, well, you know, it's a big dance. You know, get redeemed for body. So timidity most times follows people based on life experiences and the things they've gone through in life shapes their life. Whew. This has been an amazing episode. I've been talking da -da 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 right, but I'm going to end this episode right now and we will be back to talk about how you are going to overcome this thing and live a better life, live, express all the things that God has put inside of you because you don't have to live timid one more day of your life. One more time, thank you for joining TWC. Until I see you in the next episode, please like did you like before you started watching like i said now you can like second like. Oh, no don't like second like that one is unlike now leave a comment tell me how this has blessed you till i see you in the next episode god bless you and i love you